Hello, and welcome to Film Appreciation. I am your professor, Christopher Miller. While this course is entirely online, I will hold office hours on Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. My office is located at the Playhouse Theater, room 104. However, the best way to contact me at other times is through email at miller34 at nsuok.edu. A little bit about this course. Film Appreciation is a survey course designed to help the students understand how meaning is produced in cinema. You will learn to critically analyze a diverse range of filmmaking practices, concepts, and theories. This course covers multiple aspects of film's history, form, techniques, process, and its impact on society. The required text for this course is Persistence of Vision by Miller and Pursley. The textbook is available through the Campus Bookstore, Amazon, or through the publisher's website. Further information and links are available on Blackboard. Heads up, your first deadline is approaching. The following items are due between July 1st and July 4th at noon. The introductions with fellow students, discussion board post, and there's two parts. Your original post is due Tuesday, July 2nd by noon. And please don't wait to complete this, as this is my method for taking attendance for the online section. Additionally, you have three peer responses that are due by Thursday, July 4th at noon. Additionally, there is a quiz covering the syllabus and the documentary The Cutting Edge that is also due Thursday, July 4th at noon. Further information about both of these assignments is located in the assignments section of the course. This is where you will access a schedule of all assignments, which are all broken down into individual folders. You will note that from here on out, all assignments are due on Thursdays at noon. The first film you'll view is a documentary called The Cutting Edge. A link for this film is located in the assignments section of Blackboard. I like to begin the class with this documentary because it provides a brief examination of film history and its evolution while viewing it from the specific aspect of editing, which is really the formal element that distinguished film from all the other art forms. In its earliest forms, cinema was little more than a novelty. It was photography, which was still in its infancy, that moved. And earlier filmmakers just simply pointed the camera and filmed whatever interested them. These earlier films were referred to as actualities, and each of these films consisted of a single run of film portraying everyday happenings. A train passing by, uh, a, a man watering his lawn, and these were the rudimentary narratives of film. And in this documentary, editor and film historian Walter Murch quotes one of the fathers of early cinema who considered cinema to be an invention without a future. Whereas prior to 1903, film was very much just a novelty, but Edwin S. Porter's Life of an American Fireman transformed the medium in 1903. By intercutting two unrelated shots, Porter created an emotional impact on the audience. In essence, he created the conventional narrative device that cinema would employ from here on out, the juxtaposition of images to tell the story. His films showed juxtaposed shots of a woman in a burning apartment, coupled with firemen getting in gear, fire engines racing down the street. And the audience completed the story by connecting that the people were in danger and the firemen were racing to save them. This then created an emotional desire in the audience to see the people in the building saved. By intercutting, Porter created suspense and implied a question and the audience couldn't help but ask, will the firemen save the people in danger? Director D.W. Griffith experimented even deeper with ideas of psychological connection in his cutting, and he established the grammar of film editing that we still use today with the standard invisible cutting or seamless editing. With its use of match-on-action cuts and conscientious adherence to screen direction, this type of cutting allowed the filmmakers to manipulate the story without calling attention to the cuts. One of the most famous Russian theorists was Lev Kuleshov, who experimented with audiences' perception by juxtaposing two different shots together to create a new meaning. His famous experiment involved taking a single shot of a man staring at the camera and intercutting this shot with three other shots. A bowl of soup, a small girl playing with a doll, and finally a woman weeping over a casket. His discovery was that each of these individual combinations elicited a distinctly different response from the audiences about the performance of the actor. 
how hungrily he looked at the soup, how tenderly he looked at the little girl, and how sorrowfully he looked at the weeping woman. This demonstrated just how effective the manipulation of the film form can manipulate the actor's performance and therefore manipulate the audience's perception. French New Wave directors like Jean-Luc Godard later challenged conventional editing techniques by using jump cuts. Jump cuts did not adhere to the seamless invisible editing used in classical editing. For an example of early use of jump cutting in American film, look at editor Dee Dee Allen's masterful shootout sequence at the end of Bonnie and Clyde. Here, invisible editing techniques that create the illusion of continuous time and space are thrown out the window. These cuts jump back and forth in time and space, breaking all the continuity of established screen direction and time duration. I hope this little introductory video gives you a strong sense of this course, and once again, welcome to Film Appreciation.